Hello everybody, my name is Lash Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. This is my thoughts on market happenings for the week ending July 8th, 2022. Looking at the indexes for the week, the TSX, the Russell 2000, S&P 500, NASDAQ and Dow Jones were all up after a volatile but uh, uptrending week. So good news. There were some reversals uh, during some of the trading days uh, looking pretty volatile. Oil and gold were both down once again for the week. Ooh, not that great. Uh, oil dropped below 100 per barrel but recovered by the end of the week. So good news for us Canadians. On Friday, the U.S. unemployment rate for June came in at 3.6% as expected, which is considered full employment and will continue to prevent a serious recession. The U.S. weekly jobless claims rose up to 235,000, however. Canada's unemployment rate came in at a better than expected 4.9% rather than the expected 5.1%, so we're looking good in Canada. The great employment picture on both sides of the border is what's going to keep a recession away, or at least a recession that is felt by the population. Nobody feels the pinch if they have a job. The U.S. Fed meeting minutes for June meeting uh, show that the uh, Fed wouldn't mind a mild recession to kill off inflation. Driving down inflation is a priority for both central banks. A uh, half a percent or three-quarter percent raise next meeting is expected from the U.S. notes, and all will be data dependent. U.S. markets fell initially and then went up, while Canada's didn't change on the announcements, since the market thinks that if bad things happen, the U.S. Fed will lower the interest rates and everything will be well. Uh, Bank of Canada is definitely targeting inflation also, and will do anything to lower the inflation, happy to risk a recession to stop the inflation. Turning to Canadian real estate, the Toronto housing market is cooling down the fourth month in a row, about 11% in total. Canadian real estate is slowing due to a lower number of buyers. The July 13th Bank of Canada interest rate decision is expected in the bond market to be a three quarter percent increase to two and a quarter percent from 1.5 percent today. Another a half a percent increase is expected in September, ending at three and a quarter by the end of the year. Mortgages are typically two percent over the numbers I had just mentioned, so the mortgage rates are going to be approaching six percent by the end of 2022. There is some softening of inflation in the U.S. wages leading to thinking that the U.S. Fed at the end of July may not raise a full three quarters percent expected, but could just raise a half a percent. Alternately, they could raise more now to have more room to lower later if needed, especially since three quarters of a percent is already priced into the market, so they're not really doing any extra harm. Worries are that we will have a recession later in 2022 or more likely in 2023, and that the Q2 earnings will be lower than expected. But there have been no earnings warnings yet, and uh, Taiwan Semiconductors reported a good quarter already. The U.S. is considering removing some of the uh, Trump-era tariffs on China, so that's going to help uh, both sides of that uh, equation. And uh, turning to Canadian oil, the Canadian oil companies uh, are reportedly breaking even uh, at uh, $35 per barrel on the average. So even with lower price of oil, they will have lots of cash to keep buying back shares, which they are now getting at a better price as the shares uh, came down some. If there is a recession, oil will be affected through a demand slowdown. The lack of oil infrastructure and a lack of supply will still keep the price up as high as $140 per barrel, some experts say. The U.S. may already be in a recession or a recessionary environment as a uh, rise in layoffs and jobless claims uh, is starting to occur. 
some prices, such as discretionary purchases, would come down if there was a recession. Uh, looking at next week, we have earnings. Uh, so Thursday is Taiwan Semiconductors, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley. Friday is United Health, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, and Citigroup as the earnings season gets going. Next week's economic events, on Wednesday, we have the U.S. inflation data in CPI, and of course, we have the July 13th Bank of Canada interest rate decision, which is going to be a big one. If you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.